Hi there and welcome back to another episode at Station Road. Now with this video we continue on with the lift out hill section. So this particular episode is quite a full on episode. There is so many different things going on in here. It's sort of taken me a wee while to actually chronologically put everything together. So I've made a wee list here just so that I can actually keep track of what has been accomplished so far. So just a wee brief sort of rundown of what is in this particular video. First of all, something interesting is happening here, which you would not have seen from previous videos. And that is I have now moved all my locomotives into my office. And the main reason really is the garage is not a suitable location, even though I did have them in a closed cabinet. It's just too cold and I've actually sort of found that it takes quite a wee while for the locomotives to sort of warm up uh, to run around the layout so I bought them in here because I use the office obviously a lot more it is insulated and it has uh, proper heating so I've added in these shelves here and I've simply displayed the locomotives on an angle it means I can actually pack more locomotives in here and it was actually quite frightening when I actually put this all together because then I realized my goodness I've kind of gone overboard with the number of locomotives I have so that's the new addition and of course it works nicely it can be on display here so that if you couldn't be bothered looking at me you can look at these lovely locomotives so the next part in this video will be to do with the church scene and there's been quite a few comments as well in regard to that from the previous video so there's going to be in some some interesting aspects in that and sort of how i tackle that this also involved actually doing a little bit of stained glass for the church because of course I wanted to put some lighting in the church. Now the other interesting thing that was also covered in the previous video was attaching some kind of handle to the entire hill section so it can be easily lifted in and out. Now as I mentioned in the previous video I didn't want to have some large handle somewhere in the scene so in tackling this issue the handle has been hidden of course inside the church so that sort of all comes together as one sort of kind of nice and tidy component also in this video we get into some of the walls and the retaining walls for example on the track side of the hill and also on the road side of the hill as well so there's quite a bit of work in that in terms of cutting out shapes and the Metcalf card materials as well because there's a number of different materials I've used for that and then of course finally there's also the overhead bridge which goes over the upper level track and this of course is one of the first components where I'm actually using the laser cutter to produce the substructure for this overhead bridge and of course we see how that works out as well so I think really without further ado it's really a case of getting into it so we will start with the church scene and an explanation of what I was about to do and how I tackled that whole church scene. So one of the initial aspects about the current or existing churchyard is it very much was based on the original location of where this church used to be before the extension began and of course it had a much more confined space and quite an unusual space in, in some respects to what could fit within that area. So with that in mind there was a number of things to consider with this church. The first one was you know do I just keep everything exactly as it is position it back in the layout which I've accommodated for and that was part of the plan during the hill construction. So the other option that I had up my sleeve was to dismantle this existing diorama, detach the church, salvage the brick fencing around the churchyard and also all the other little bits and pieces and reposition that on the hill in a more sort of suitable orientation and also really it was to create a bigger gap around this end because that is very restricted. Now interestingly a lot of people commented on this churchyard and that it seemed quite small 
and yes in reality it would be quite a small churchyard but as I've mentioned in the past it's a case of considering how the landscape used to look once upon a time and this is before railways and roads and infrastructure took place now I'm going to go on the basis that this church was built long before the railway was and in this scenario we could easily say that uh, in order for the industrial revolution and the progress of mankind they needed some land to build their railways and of course the lower level cutting so they cut chunks off the churchyard to get their railway through so what i'm actually going to do and this is sort of based on what i was thinking that i'd need to do anyway and that is to carefully try and remove this church and all its scenic assets off this mdf board and also the decisions kind of been helped along by some of the great comments that i've had from the previous episode so thank you to those who've basically sealed the deal for the church removal so we're going to do this now now this is probably going to be quite a difficult process because i know that this is gl pva glued down to the mdf quite securely and it's a case of trying to get all of these items off this board without too much damage Right, so that fortunately wasn't as horrific as I thought it would actually be. So with the church removed from its old base, it was then a case of putting it onto the hill and just sort of working out roughly what kind of location I could sort of maneuver it into, considering also that I'm going to hide a handle inside the church as well. So I sort of wanted the handle to be in a position that it wasn't too sort of off center in order for it to not be unbalanced really in any way when it came to lifting the hill section off. So with a rough sort of position sorted out, of course the next thing that was worth actually doing while the church was now separated from its old base was to look at some lighting and also actually look at a way of doing some stained glass windows. Now, I mean, I think there's a number of ways that this could be sort of tackled. I mean, you could possibly take a photograph of some real stained glass and possibly laser photocopy that onto some clear acetate. The only thing I sort of wonder is whether it might be a little bit too faded looking and not really sort of demonstrate any sort of rich colors. So what I actually looked at in the end was just simply using the existing Metcalf windows that were installed in the church and what I've essentially done is just pulled the two end ones off because they're a little bit more elaborate to a degree even though it's just a simple diamond crisscross shape and I've used these rather interesting paints which I actually got from an art store and they are oil based paints but they're clear now i know that you can get similar paints in the model industry as well particularly when it comes to car kits and things like that that you would have clear paint for things like indicators and all of that kind of thing so the paint of course dries crystal clear and of course i picked out a couple of colors and painstakingly actually went through and individually painted each separate diamond shape in order to get a stained glass finish and I'm actually relatively happy with the result it certainly you do get an effect and under certain lighting conditions it really does show up very nicely so the other aspect as well of course 
was installing this handle. Now a kind viewer from the previous episode gave me a link to another chap who had devised a handle for a lift out section hidden inside a building I believe it was and I think that's really sort of where it needed to go in terms of having a handle so of course the only building on that section of the hill was the church. I did have to actually cut out some of the bracing within the church in order to fit the handle in. Now I decided in the end just to use a simple handle from the local hardware store which had two separate single screw holes at each end and then I thought well how on earth is that going to be attached to some high density polystyrene when screws would just simply rip out of it. So what I actually decided to do was cut some short lengths of dowel that were the same depth as the hillside and essentially drilled a hole within the polystyrene that was smaller than the actual wooden dowels and literally wedged and jammed them in there so they're pretty much in there solid as a rock I don't think I could probably get them out but then that gave me the opportunity to anchor some screws into the timber and it works very well it's nice and easy to lift out and of course the hill, the entire hillside being made of this high density polystyrene it is relatively light so the handle suffices very well. The only thing that I have actually come across which is really quite curious in terms of the lighting inside the church of course is it reflects off the chrome of the handle. I couldn't get a black handle but what I'm going to have to do is possibly paint the handle or cover it in something so that the light doesn't actually glint or shine off the handle that's inside the church. So moving on we then tackled the overhead bridge on the upper level of track. Now I sort of looked at a couple of different options in terms of do I make it another arch type bridge but out of stone or do I make it a girder bridge and when I sort of looked at the track that ran underneath and we had three parallel lines they were all equally spaced there really wasn't enough room between each of the tracks for me to drop a stone column of any sort unless I'd actually realigned the track and I thought at the end of the day I really just didn't want to do that but then I sort of felt well I didn't feel that a, a full arch across all three tracks would kind of work terribly well and also where the arches drop down towards the end columns that there is a potential for rolling stock and coaches to catch on that lower part of the arch so I decided in the end to do a girder bridge that stretched across all three tracks. Now the girder components themselves are just simply a plastic kit. They're not wheels. I think it could possibly be an Atlas girder bridge kit because it is quite chunky but then I quite like that. It sort of worked quite well. I could imagine maybe that it would have been maybe a slightly more sturdy bridge for farm machinery to cross over potentially. So yeah that um, that's the reasoning behind that. So in terms of the actual bridge itself I designed the whole thing up on the computer and then simply passed that through Lightburn into this laser cutter and by God does it make such a difference. It, no more cutting and trying to cut unusual shapes or cut internal inside shapes out of the 3mm MDF which I use quite regularly for base construction components. So we have here the remnants of the actual bridge kit I guess you could call it and this is what was cut out of just some 3mm MDF. We can see these sort of um, shapes in here. These are the end walls on the inside and then of course they're cut out to actually accommodate the other pieces which actually slot into place so the whole thing really sort of comes together and you end up with quite a rigid result. So the bridge itself which I've then covered in some Metcalf I think grit stone paper it's quite a, a large stone block look to it which I think works quite well it's got a quite an industrial look so essentially what you sort of end up with is this very sturdy solid structure probably over engineered to a degree but you end up with a very precise and 
accurate structure that is ready to be weathered of course uh, I haven't got to that point yet this is still in very much in its pristine form and then you've also got the 3 mil MDF struts running underneath that sort of kind of mimic the idea that there are supporting girders underneath the actual roadbed so the idea of this bridge is that, that will be removable because if I ever have to shift the layout in any way then I can simply lift this out along with the hillside as well. So once the overhead bridge was actually complete and I could sort of temporarily put it in position I could then sort of look at the retaining wall that runs around the back of the hill along the track side. So this of course I used the same material and what I actually did is just trim back the polystyrene just a little bit to get a vertical or upright surface to attach some sections of 3mm MDF. Then of course there were the pillars in between each wall section and if that was also laser cut as well just to get a nice precise edge and accurate dimensions. They were then also covered in the Metcalf card material and then of course they were slotted and once they were slotted and then of course I could then cover the actual wall sections in the stone Metcalf material as well. So once that retaining wall section was complete it was a case of moving on to the churchyard itself and I sort of looked at a number of different ways of attaching the church wall. Originally I thought I would actually reuse the old church walls and I did actually try that and what I actually did is tried a few sections with some hot glue because I really sort of felt that might, that might be the only really solid or durable way of doing it but in the end I just sort of didn't like the look of it. I, I sort of felt that maybe it wouldn't be that large stone block type wall that it would actually be something similar to the style of the church itself. So what I ended up doing is ditching the old church walls and creating new ones and at the same time what I thought I'd do in order to make this really really durable because the potentially this whole hill section is probably going to get lifted out quite a bit in order for me to get access into that part of the layout. And so it really did need to be quite durable because I'm forever knocking things and breaking stuff when I'm reaching over and all of that kind of thing. So what I've actually done, and it was similar to what I actually did for the retaining wall along the side of the road, was actually cut into the polystyrene and create a groove just with a fine hacksaw blade, which created some grooves within the polystyrene which then allowed for slotting in the wall sections so that they actually went into the polystyrene and created a much sturdier structure. So in this situation I used a lighter weight card rather than MDF and then glued the Metcalf stone wall material to either side of the substrate card and then once that was set and dried it was a case of jamming these wall sections into the polystyrene with the aid of a bit of glue and I think that really does create a much more solid structure and when it came to the stone posts in between each wall section it was a case of wrapping some more of the Metcalf stone material around just some square wooden dowel. Now what I actually did in this situation interestingly because the Metcalf stone material that you buy in the packs it only comes on a sort of medium weight card so in order for that to wrap around these wooden dowels these square wooden dowels what I actually did is delaminated the actual Metcalf stone material from its heavier weight card and the easiest way to do that was just to soak the card material so I cut out the strips to the required amounts soaked that in some water or I actually used a really soggy sponge until it sort of went all soft and then it was actually quite easy to peel back the top layer of the print and then of course once that was off it was a case of drying that out and then of course that wrapped around the wooden square pegs quite nicely so that I didn't have to worry about edges or having to deal with that afterwards and then once that was sorted out for the actual stone pillar sections it was just a case of using a drill bit to create a bit of a hole at the end of each wall section and then poking in the square stone column. 
So once the churchyard walls were all complete, it was a case of moving to the other side of the road and looking at the retaining wall where the base structure was already in place from when the hill was under construction. Now it may have been possible to apply all the brickwork and what I wanted to do in that scenario at the time, but I sort of felt that it would be easier to do it afterwards simply because it's on a gradient, it's got curves in it, and I sort of wanted the brickwork to line up to the upper edge of the retaining wall as opposed to it actually being level with the horizon. So the upper section, which is essentially the, the wall section against the edge of the road, that was done in the stonework because I kind of felt like, well, when the railway was built, they would have used the same materials for all of those sections. Now, I'm going on the basis that the churchyard was larger before the railways came. So there is a combination where when the railways came along, they had to realign the road a little bit and there was some stonework in there. Then they've actually also patched in some brickwork. So it's a real hodgepodge of an area where there's been changes over time. So that's really what I was try attempting to try and do. Now, of course, all of this is going to be weathered and dealt with in lots of ways that it's going to have gone sympathetically tied in with the landscape but at the moment this is in its very sort of raw form where I've got the texture brick materials in place. So we'll leave it here for this particular episode but I definitely think the whole hill scene is coming together quite nicely. We can now really start to see how it's taking shape, where the road alignment is going and some of the more solid infrastructure type materials are in place. So probably the next video will cover some weathering on all of the wall and stonework material and then once that's done then I can actually start getting into some of the greenery and foliage type materials as well. So that will then hopefully transform the hill scene to another level. So to finish off I'll just do a wee running session with some trains passing by the low level retaining wall and under the new overbridge with of course the church up on the hill in the background. So thank you all for watching. I certainly do hope you once again gathered some inspiration and ideas for your own layouts and please do take care everyone. Look after yourselves and I will catch you next time. Bye for now.